Call the Asian longhorn beetle is a well-known pest in central Massachusetts. It's already led to the loss of more than 30,000 trees. And this week, the USDA confirms a new infestation has been found in Worcester. Tonight, we're learning more on what is being done to combat this new discovery. The Asian longhorn beetle continues to make its presence felt in central Mass. Since January of uh, 2016, we have identified in total 62 infested trees. The new infestation is in the area of McEwen Road. At least 62 trees will need to be removed, but the USDA says the damage is limited. The good news is that the additional infested trees around there are likely infested, and we caught this population uh, at, the, at the right time. The newly discovered infestation will not change the area searched by the USDA. This is not going to expand any of our, our boundaries uh, as, as they currently are. City Councilor for the District George Russell says the Asian longhorn beetle is an issue that the city will continue to deal with. It's not necessarily that it's disappointing it's an issue, it's, it's the, you know, where they, they are where they are. Uh, I'm just glad that we caught it at this time before, uh, before it could spread any further. Worcester police added foot patrols to the area around City Hall and the Common. The city says they are having a big impact on public safety as it looks to expand programs and encourage businesses to invest downtown. Today, our Olivia Lemon walked the beat with the foot patrol officers, and she has more. How's it going, sir? Good. Just a couple things. No smoking on the Common. All right, it's a new city ordinance. A routine patrol Tuesday morning for Worcester police officers Jason Gommond and Lisa Carlson. Look at my store. Some kids just okay. come in. Some kids just store. Quickly turns into a search for a suspect at the Midtown Mall in Worcester. A black male, six feet tall, with a backpack. What we saw when we were out uh, walking the foot patrol was the ability of business owners, when they have a concern, to come up to us, right up to us, and get us involved immediately in their problems. Sergeant Joseph Ash says additional foot patrol officers were assigned to the city common and immediate downtown areas in January after complaints about quality of life issues. We have officers assigned throughout the common. They go up to people, they instruct them of the behavior that is tolerated and the things that uh, is not. We got the perfect set of officers uh, who had the right attitude, you know, trying to help people where we could help people, but making sure that people knew that they couldn't get away with just doing anything on the common or in our downtown area. How's it going today? Oh, not too bad. Yeah. Nice day. City manager Edward Augustus requested the additional foot patrol officers. He says business owners and city employees were concerned about issues like open drug deals and people falling asleep on park benches. It's been almost like a night and day situation where uh, the feedback from our employees, the feedback from the businesses in the area, and just my own personal observations are it is dramatically improved. Crime seems to be decreasing. Foot presence is, is very important to us, and, uh, and that reaction and prompt reaction is wonderful. Businesses like Bay State Savings Bank allow foot patrol officers access into their building to look out the windows for illegal activity and gain additional information. It's happened two or three times where we've taken action from a a business's window seeing illegal uh, things happen down here at the common. And as the city expands programs to bring more people to the common, officers say they are seeing positive results. So the people in the community uh, really are coming down here and enjoying it and feel that it's a lot more safer and enjoyable down here. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. Major detours in the city this week as construction begins for the first half of the new Belmont Street Bridge. A portion of Interstate 290 will be closed overnight for several days this week from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Tonight, 290 eastbound will be closed and detoured at exit 16. On Wednesday and Thursday, 290 westbound is scheduled to be closed and detoured at exit 21. Traffic will continue as usual over the section of the Belmont Street Bridge. Well, cleanup efforts continued in the city after Monday's spring snowstorm. Central Mass was hit with between 4 and 5 inches of snow Monday. City says crews were out again today treating the roads. Cold weather tonight could lead to more icy conditions. The DPW says anyone with concerns about service should call their customer service line at 508 929 1300. Well, after waiting an extra day because of the weather, the Boston Red Sox can finally play ball. The team played its first game of the Major League Baseball season today. Randy Madison caught up with a couple of fans who were glued to the TV.
In the first game of the season for the Red Sox, there is optimism. The starting pitching is a little bit of a question, but they need some consistency and have some guys stay healthy. But looks like the relief pitching is very strong and the lineup looks you know, real strong. So, hoping for the best. I hope uh, David Ortiz has a great last season. You know, he's embraced the leadership role here, which is a hard job to have, I think, in Boston. And concern. We'll see what the pitching staff does after David Price. Everyone was tuned in at the bar to see the Red Sox take on Cleveland and former manager Terry Francona. A sign warmer days are ahead, which is also good for the sports bars across Worcester. A lot of people always come down, you know, share a couple appetizers and then, you know, head back to work. Get to catch a little bit of the game, too. It's the first game for new ace David Price beginning of the end for superstar David Ortiz. When it comes to the Red Sox, fans are always opinionated. I think that Sandoval is being treated a little unfairly, to tell you the truth. Yeah. And ready to cheer on the team as they try to get back to their winning ways and bring another title to Beantown. Go Red Sox. Andy Madison, Worcester News Tonight. And yes, football season is over, but some good news for fans. Thursday Night Football is heading to Twitter. According to a tweet from the NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, Twitter has reached a deal with the National Football League to live stream Thursday night football games. The NFL says the streams will be free. As part of the deal, Twitter will also host in-game highlights from Thursday night games as well as broadcast the pregame shows through Twitter's live streaming app, Periscope. Well, affordable housing will be on the agenda at Worcester City, or was, excuse me, was on the agenda at City Council tonight. Preserving those housing units is a priority in several communities in Central Mass. Our Brittany Schaefer has the details. We have a, a report going to the City Council tonight on the, the um, status of expiring used properties. There are 18 developments in Worcester with affordable housing units, and the city says 16 of those properties have renewed or are in the process of renewing their affordable housing restrictions. Housing stock in any community, particularly in an urban setting such as Worcester, the large city, um, you have to have housing that's safe and affordable for everyone. It's important that uh, we have adequate and affordable housing for all of our citizens. Congressman Jim McGovern visited the Linwood Mill Apartments in Northbridge Tuesday. It is a 55 and older community built inside a historic mill. By preserving this building, we're not only providing people with good quality affordable housing, you know, we're, we're, we're protecting and preserving a major part of our history. This building was uh, abandoned at the time, um, so it was refurbished and it's offered 75 uh, units um, for affordable housing and um, has revived the area. The property manager of Linwood says most often she sees her residents returning back to Massachusetts to be with family. Housing is not affordable in most cases, so they can't return. Affordable housing like Linwood, they can come back to where their family is, where their roots are, where they want to retire, where they want to be. As you get older, you know, you need a place, and this was just, we came here and we loved it. In Worcester, Chief Development Officer Michael Trainer says having affordable housing available for people who need it is a big priority. It's key to have good, uh, well-constructed, up-to-code, compliant uh, housing, and that's what these projects afford. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Mechanics Hall is the site of Becker College's Presidential Speaker Series Tuesday night. Dr. Muhammad Yunus was tonight's speaker. Yunus is from Bangladesh. He's known as a social entrepreneur, economist, and banker. He earned the 2006 Nobel Peace Prize and is known as the father of microfinancing, which aims to create development in financing for those less fortunate. President of Becker College, Robert Johnson, says Eunice was selected to speak because he was representative of what Becker College stands for. It will reinforce um, the mission uh, of our institution, which is one of the reasons why students uh, decided to come to Becker, uh, to get a transformational learning experience, uh, utilizing the agile mindset uh, that will prepare them to go out into a global society and make a difference. The college has proceeds from the Speaker Series support Becker College's scholarship and interim programs. While well, construction on Massachusetts' third resort casino is officially underway. The groundbreaking happened today in Taunton. The casino is being built by the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. The mayor of Taunton says his city is the best location for the development and it will bring a much needed boost to the community. What does this mean for Taunton? means over $8 million a year in revenue. 
It means 20 new police officers, 20 firefighters on a recurring basis, which we, we badly need. Critical upgrades to our infrastructure, our East Taunton fire station, a police substation. This is just a terrific opportunity for the city of Taunton. The casino being built doesn't require a license from the State Gaming Commission. The commission has said it will offer up to three licenses. Two of them have already been awarded. A third could go to a casino in nearby city of Brockton.